where is Creed? Creed? Here. Quality assurance. Your job. I really think you screwed the pooch on this one, Creed. Because of you, the entire company is in jeopardy. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And, you know, we got some bad news for, for fans of, of adapted comics to TV. Vagrant Queen appears to be on its way to cancellation after Sci-Fi moved it from its primetime viewing slot to to a to basically the dead hole i believe it's you know it's a midnight on friday we're gonna we're gonna read the article here in a minute and uh, it's not looking good for mags visaggio's uh first uh, foray into uh television and streaming and with me to talk about it is my man doc how you doing buddy i'm doing good i'm doing good this is uh I i'm enjoying talking about this particular tv show yeah, we'll get into why this is why you probably enjoy, it, but let me let me read the article from uh, canceledsci-fi.com. Sci-fi's new space opera series Vagrant Queen launched in late March, but has yet to find much of an audience, and now looks like the show is getting booted from prime time. Through its first three episodes, has averaged only a .07 rating based on same day viewing for the 18 to 49 year old demographic, with its numbers sinking each week. Neither Sci-Fi nor parent company NBC Universal has an ownership stake in the show, so the network only makes money on advertising revenue, and that is driven by the same-day numbers. At the current levels, sponsors are certainly not interested in paying much for commercial spots, especially outside of prime time. According to the current schedule, the planned April 17th airing has been preempted, and the network's website indicates the show will next air Thursday, April 23rd at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That shifts the show out of primetime hours, likely for a burn-off run. The last time that a sci-fi series got kicked out of primetime was in 2016, when Hunters was rooted from its Monday 10 p.m. Uh, time slot to midnight. That show also suffered from low ratings and was canceled at the end of its first season. Currently, it appears that Vagrant Queen is headed for the same fate. With the sinking ratings, I had quickly moved the show to cancellation likely status, and the scheduling shift seems to confirm its fate. It has been flying solo on Friday nights without much benefit of a decent lead-in, and it did not receive much in the way of promotion from the network. It is also not a well-known property based on the Vault comic book series by Magdalene Visaggio and Jason Smith. It is possible that the show has international financing and or syndication deals that could keep it viable, but if not, it seems almost certain that sci-fi will part ways with the series by the end of the season. So there's the big news, Doc. You know, uh, Magdalene Visaggio was was very excited about this deal. She has toiled in obscurity in the in the comic book industry. Not really well known. Never really had a big sales juggernaut. You know, Vagrant Queen was always an odd pickup. You know, for any uh, television or streaming platform to pick up. You know, considering no one really reads it. I I never understood why this got picked up. I've read like half of one issue of one of the comic books and i i didn't understand the appeal i mean i guess that it works for a channel like sci-fi because it is a little it's you know space sci-fi stuff but it didn't seem like you know this was a they would have done better to develop their own property of a similar type than license this in my opinion the, the problem really with the show is because it wasn't financed through NBC or sci-fi, they had no skin in the game, so why would they ever market it? So there was certainly never going to be a lot of awareness of the show, and especially being associated with a comic book that no one really reads. And then, of course, Magdalene Visaggio, um, much maligned, but certainly uh, has a personality and um, a reputation you know, on comic social media as, as not being the friendliest creator in the industry. It's, it's kind of hard to really create that audience that's just fervent for your product. And it's going to go out there and spread your message, you know, with word of mouth and let their friends know that Vagrant Queen is coming to sci-fi and it's something that you need to read or you need to watch. Uh, so that that was never really going to be there just because of the way she kind of handles herself on social media and, and, and communicates with people. So well, it, it was always, uh, you know, it was kind of destined to fail. Remember who mags is repped by she has a hollywood agent um her the the agent is basically part of what she does is produce as much content as humanly possible in a year so that when the agent goes into a hollywood pitch meeting they can flop 
300, 400 comics on the table and say, look at how much they've written. Hollywood producers don't know shit about comic books. They don't know that just because she wrote a couple hundred books over the course of a couple of years doesn't mean they've actually sold it, They that they didn't. It doesn't mean that anybody bought them. It just means that she kept getting pitches accepted. The Hollywood producers think, yeah, hey, look, obviously she must be, you know, have a following or else she wouldn't keep getting hired like this. She wouldn't keep getting stuff produced. So it's kind of almost like, you know, you're playing ignorant Hollywood producers and getting work out of it. Well, I think you're you're underselling, you know, the Hollywood producers here. There it's it's not like NBC said, Woo, wow, look at all these comic books. Let me let me put money in this and produce it. They said, you know, yeah, if you can go get it financed, go go ahead and we'll put it on some uh, you know, late at night on on Friday, you know, late prime time with no lead in. It's not like they exactly set it up for, for success. It obviously wasn't a project that they projected could be a real money maker. They would have put it in a better time slot with a better lead in. And they certainly would have wanted to finance themselves or at least had a part in it so they could have some stake in that. I think you're underselling Hollywood's ability to spot a winner, you know, a hero from a zero. And I, I don't think that they and I don't think that they had circled Vagrant Queen as a real hero for sci fi. Well, I mean, NBC Universal also canceled Deadly Class to replace it with this. Uh, at Deadly Class was on last season in in this spot, and it was literally had twice the ratings. You know, this has a point zero seven average. That was averaging at point one four. It's literally they cut their audience in half in a year. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's also based off a of Rick and Mender series, and he's one of the best. Uh... And he's one of the best creators in all of comics right now. And he actually has a has a couple of – and he actually has a production deal now for, for even more series. So I, I think Rick Remender is actually going to be, be a big deal. I think NBC Universal Sci-Fi is probably going to regret that decision to move on from Rick Remender and <clears throat> kind of get in with the Mags Visaggio uh, team. I mean, maybe it could just be as simple as Mags costs half, as, half the price. But probably, I right. guarantee that the production on it – you know, with a sci-fi, you know, space opera, the sets and costumes guaranteed to cost more than it did for Deadly Class. I mean, Deadly Class was set in the 80s in basically New York City. So you could pretty much film it almost anywhere. You find the right block in New York, you could find it, you could film it there. Uh, no, I, I don't know about the production budgets and stuff like that. I, I actually, I was actually gonna watch an episode because there's a free episode. I believe it's episode number two on YouTube, and Larry and I were gonna review it, but then uh, the last minute, I, I I messaged him and I was like, I can't do it. I don't want to watch this show. All all of the reviews on it were basically abysmal. Unless you go to Rotten Tomatoes, I guess they screen them, and the, the five people that like the show gave it a five star review, so it's a five out of five. But if you go to IMDb. You know, it's a four out of 10 star show, very below average. You know, even the demographic that this is, you know, made for females in between 18 and 44, I believe it, one of them was a seven out of 10 and the other one was six out of 10. So a C minus down to like a D minus as far as grading. It's not like even the people that this show was made for liked it. Yeah, I, I think that this show is trying to recapture some of the lost audience from shows like Dark Matter and The Expanse. Both of those are gone. I mean, obviously, The Expanse is over on, I think, what, Amazon Prime now. And Dark Matter's canceled. You know, this is supposed to appeal to the same type of audience, and it fails miserably. Well, the weird thing is, is and the thing that, um, I don't know, I get a kind of a chuckle out of it, it was because of, of the way Mags held herself after she got picked up for this. She was kind of like rubbing people's nose in it and, and was acting like that like she'd really made it because she got a, a show picked up for sci-fi even though they weren't you know nbc and sci-fi sci weren't going in and, and financing it you know they was being financed to another company and you know she's made it because a, a show got picked up and it's like you now nah, you haven't made it yet you know you you got to get picked up for a second season you know you, you have to you know have some money thrown in there to expand the budget you know better production stuff like that and then you're starting to make it Whenever you do that, it's best to just 
just say, you know what? I'm, I feel very blessed that this has happened. I hope it all works out rather than telling everybody how great it's going to be and that you have finally made it to Hollywood. Yeah, well, Mags has never exactly been known for proportionality or being reasonable. Didn't she famously threaten to beat people in the teeth with baseball bats because the president said something that she, she didn't like? So, you know, let's let's just say blowing things wildly out of proportion is well within Mag's wheelhouse. Watching her do do a do a happy dance. I mean, hey, look, uh, great, you got into Hollywood once. Uh, maybe it means you can do it again. But the fact is, you're still your your show's canceled. Yeah, there's some irony in watching somebody that. Let's be honest, Max is kind of a terrible friggin' person. Watching somebody that's that terrible get up and try to rub their nose, rub everybody's else's nose in a modicum of success. Um, especially in comics where the goal should be comics. I mean, she's kind of a example of you know, the problem with most modern comics where they're in comics, not to make comics. They're in comics to get their foot into the door of Hollywood. Whereas the end goal of comics should be making comics. She doesn't seem to care about that. So I don't, you know, obviously I don't know Mags Visaggio. I don't know if she's a good person or a bad person, you know, in real life. I do know that she doesn't really present herself all that well uh, to a lot of people on social media and the way she can communicates with people. Although she, in fairness, she did have an enormous spotlight pr uh, placed on her that she probably, that wasn't really warranted. She probably had too much scrutiny just, as, you know, as far as the talent the, the writing gigs that she had at the time, it wasn't exactly like she was burning up the comic book industry with offers left and right when all of a sudden there was a lot of videos made about her and a lot of people actually went and attacked her. And it was actually pretty unfair, but she did not uh, handle herself in a professional manner after that. She kind of made an ass of herself multiple times. And, and then, then, of course, she started gloating about Vagrant Queens and, well, didn't really turn out quite like she wanted. Yeah, anytime I see somebody gloating especially when they're generally they act like an ass most of the time um watching them gloat and then get reality dropped on them i get a little bit of a a little bit of a smile on my face even though i feel kind of bad about it cuz I, I don't like seeing anybody e even bad people i don't necessarily like seeing them shit on by the world but maybe be a little bit more humble mags yeah. She makes it easier and easy not to root for her. That's for certain. But the one good news out of all of this is she does have another show that's going to be on Netflix. Unfortunately, it's Mark Millar's, you know, Space Bandits, which is basically a, a, a souped up version of her Kim and Kim that's done actually very well. That will be in Miller World. And so she'll see maybe how it's actually done, how you how you take a property like her Kim and Kim, get it ready for prime time, get it into a Netflix deal and uh, probably multiple seasons on that one. I read the comic. It's actually very good, and I, I expect it to do actually extremely well on Netflix. Well, yeah. I mean, it's Mark Miller, though. The guy's got talent, and he knows how to sell things to with mass appeal. And Mags has always been a much more niche creator, and that's fine. Um, but don't expect mainstream success from a niche creator. Well, you know, I, I'll give Sci-Fi this, NBC Universal. They took a chance on Mag Visaggio. It turns out it didn't really work. They, they basically cut off a, a pretty decent show in Deadly Class, replaced it with, with a show of basically, you know, based on a comic no one's ever really read. They didn't put any money behind it, and it failed miserably. And it, it looks like it's it's on its swan song right now on, on uh, Sci-Fi as it's been given the death time slot and will likely just go into the ether, never to be remembered again. Doc, I really appreciate your time today talking about Vagrant Queens. You know, it's been moved to a new time slot, getting ready for cancellation. Mag Visaggio uh, talked a big game, was kind of rubbing people's nose in it about how she'd made it. Turns out you hadn't quite made it through the finish line yet, and uh, it's time to start over again, Mags. Yeah, I mean, let, let's be honest. Friday night used to be considered the death slot. Uh, it was, you know, Friday at nine. That was where you put shows that were just about to get canceled. Uh, 
They they managed to find an even bigger death slot than that for this book. Yep, the the, the shows are already there. They're going to air them, and and that looks like they're going to move on. Hopefully, maybe they'll reapproach Rick Remender about filling that with another sci fi series. He certainly has a lot of those, but he's already got a production deal with the with a new company, so they'll have to go through them. And uh, he's probably a lot more expensive now. All right, Doc. Later, buddy. Later, man. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.